Okay, guys, um, welcome back to um, what we were doing before. So we were trying to calculate these um, values for the images of A, A, B, and C. So we know that A would be 2 and 0. And you want to calculate a dash. All right, so let us just write them one at a time. So a equal to two and zero. That, mean, that means the x value would be two, the y value would be zero. Over here, they are saying that you're going to add the x value to two times the y value for the top one over here. So the x value plus two times zero. So it's two plus two times zero will give you back two. All right? The y value now will be what the y value was. So this would be zero. That's what I think that means, Kevera. And any number times by zero give you about zero? Yes, yes. When you multiply a number by zero, you get about zero. So how there are two? Well, you got Miss Cabrera. Was that so? How is there are two at the top value? Why I have a two? Because remember that it is the x value plus two times the y value. So the x value, remember if you have, if you have x value equal two, and then you plus two times the y value. So it is two plus two times zero. That's what, what you're supposed to have. Right? So if you multiply two times zero, you get zero. And then now when you add, add zero plus two, you'll get what? Zero plus two give you what, Ms. Cabrera? Two. Two, right, that's how we get this. No, the Y value didn't change. So we bring back the zero over here. All right, so let's do um, the, the value, B value now. So this is B, but B is what, four zero. And you're applying the same formula. You're gonna have the X value plus two times the Y value. So what is the X value? The X value is four plus two times the Y value. The Y value is zero. So this will be four plus two times zero. How much should that give you? Four, sir. So that will give you four. So up here you would have four. And the y value remains as zero. All right, so this would be b dash. Now, if you look, if you look here, now you notice that this is where a dash is. So a dash is at the same place. <clears throat> A dash is at the same place as A. And B dash is also at the same place as B. So the only one we might shift would be D dash and C dash. So let us do those and see what happens. So C would be 4, 2.
So this would be C. So we want to calculate C dash. So C dash, we're, we're using a formula, X, which is four plus two Y. So it's four plus two times two, four plus two twos, or that, that will give you what? Eight. And the Y value still remains to be two. Let us do D. So here we should have V dash and D would be the coordinates two and two. All right, so if you follow the same formula, what, what would we have here? Six two six. Oh, what was that? Six two. Six two. So you'd have two. And two. It should be six. And then you bring back the two. All right, good. And so if you look carefully, where where C dash is now and D dash. So C dash is, is um, eight and two. So here you have eight, X equal eight and Y equal two. So this is eight and two. D dash would be what? Six and two. So here you have six and Y equal two. So this X equals six and Y equal two. Everybody see that? All right, so this is a shear along the x-axis because the, the x-coordinate of the image is what is affected, all right? Any question, guys? All right, let's just move on. All right, so um, properties of a share, a share preserve collinearity and betweenness. Collinearity just means it has the, the both share the same line. Um, betweenness means the distance between lines would remain the same. So the share also preserve distance between two points on a line. That means parallel to the line of zero movement, all right? A shear preserved area. That means the area of the shear object is equal to the area of the pre-image object. A shear does not, in general, preserve angle. All right, that means once you do a shear, the angle will change. The, the angle of the shear will be different from the angle of the pre-image. All right. And that would be the end of our transformational geometry topics. All right. So let me stop sharing this and move on to another slide. slide. All right. Here now, we'll be looking at transformational matrices. Now, all of what we have been doing with these objects, rotating them, reflecting them, translating them, and so on, all of these can be done with a matrix, meaning that we can use a matrix to multiply these coordinates and get the same effect as what we were just doing with the formulas, all right? So we are going to look at some matrices that will give you some effects of transformation. All right. So this matrix here is one that you should all be familiar with. 
Which matrix is this one, guys? Unit matrix, sir. The unit matrix, right. Now, the unit matrix is a matrix that if you play around with it by kind of switching up the elements, you may come across matrices that will give you transformational effects. So bear in mind what the unit matrix is. And with that said, we're going to use other matrices that resembles, other matrices that resemble the unit matrix, but not exactly like the unit matrix. They, they will resemble in the sense that they will have ones and zeros in them, but the ones and zero may not be in the same position as they are in the unit matrix. All right, so let us look at some of them. And some of them, the ones and zero are in the same position, the signs may not be the same, all right? So we're going to be looking first at a matrix. If you use that matrix to multiply the coordinates of any shape, the vertices of the shapes, you will get the shape to reflect. All right, so the, so the reflection matrix would be this matrix. Now remember reflection has to have a mirror line. And for the reflection matrices, you will have um, the mirror line for this one would be the x-axis. So once they tell you that you have a reflection in the x-axis, it means that the x-axis in terms of the graph, x-axis will be the mirror line. All right, so now you have to pay attention to which axis these matrices are reflected in. And uh, as well as you're going to look at how the numbers are arranged. Now the key, the, 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 the reason behind these matrices really is the purpose really is to remember them. If you are able to remember these matrices, then three quarters of your problem is done where this, the reflection matrices are concerned. So it's just to remember them. How can you remember this matrix? Look at it carefully and see if you could come up with a way of remembering it. First, it resembles the unit matrix. So the ones run along the diagonal. However, one of the ones the one which is in the lower section carries a negative sign. Would you be able to look at this matrix again and know that it is the matrix that reflects in the x-axis? What do you think, guys? No. Go ahead, Ms. Cabrera. No, I said no, sir. All right, give me. All right, so it might not be very obvious how to remember this. But if you think though, look back at the unit matrix. The ones are running in the diagonal exactly the same way. And in the other diagonal, you have zeros. Now, to remember that this one, this is the one that is reflected in the x-axis. Think of the columns in terms of x and y. 
So the x, x values are above and the y values are below. Following that, guys. So it means that this one up here would be a x, x value. And this one down here would be a y value. So if you have, if this matrix is reflecting in the x axis, the one up top, which is the x, is positive. Does that does that help you any better than before, Ms. Cabrera? Yes. So so if it is reflecting in the x-axis, then the one above going to be positive. Because the one above is an x value. So what do you think would happen if it is reflected in the y-axis? Anybody? It would look negative. Which one would be, what is it? If it is reflected in the y-axis, what, what would be negative? Uh, the y value. All right, let me show you what the, the matrix of reflecting in the y-axis look like. This one is a reflection in the y-axis. What you notice about this one? How is it different from the one before? The, the one, sir. They have different, the negative ones that share different positions. All right. Now, I, I would like to think that when it is reflected in the y-axis, the one in the y position is positive. Remember, we think of the, the, the row, row above, those are the x values. And the row below, those are the y values. So the one below would be a y. So that value for y would be positive. Right, this one, the one above would be positive. The one below would be positive. When the one above is positive, it reflects in the x-axis. When the one below is positive, it reflects in the y-axis. Can you, can you follow that? Does it, does it seem to make any sense, guys? Yes. Right. So, so just think of the unit matrix, one above positive, that means the one below has to be negative. It, that, so that gives you a reflection in the x-axis. Reflection in the y-axis, the one below positive, that means the one above must be negative. All right. Now here comes the tricky part. So these are reflections in the X and Y axis. We have two more reflections. Now these are not reflection in the X and Y axis now, but instead these are reflection in the line Y equal X and the line Y equal minus X. What do you notice now about these matrices when you compare them to the unit matrix. Uh, when y equal x, all ones are positive, and when y equal minus x, all ones are negative. All right, before you get to the, the positive and the negative ones, look at the matrices here and compare them to the unit matrix. How, how, how are the, the numbers arranged in these as opposed to look, the one switch places with the zeros? Right. So now you have the zeros coming down the, the diagonal from the upper left to the lower right. In the previous ones, you would have the ones coming down. So these would be exactly the same form as the unit matrix. But these now, you find out that the ones and zeros 
interchange places. So instead of the ones coming down from upper left to lower right, now you have zeros coming down from upper left to lower right. Everybody see that? So yes, if you can make that switch now, then for the reflection in the line y equal x, that is easy. The two ones are positive. The reflection in the in the line y equal minus x, the two ones are negative, right? And and that is easy to relate. Now up here, x and y are positive. Down here, x is negative. So where where you have y equal negative x, the ones are now negative. So these are some just little key things that you use to remember, sorry, to remember them. So these are four matrices that you just learned that you should be able to commit to memory based on the things that you just look at. So I'm going to know, I'm going to just, remove these slides a little bit. And now just asking you guys to tell me the matrices that we remember are the ones that we just look at. So what is the matrix? What somebody, if you want to volunteer, or you want me to call on you, maybe it's easier to call on you because you guys don't like to volunteer. So let me call on you. So which matrix, I want you to describe the matrix in terms of the ones and zeros. Describe the matrix that gives a reflection in the x-axis. Um, Ms. Cabrera. I can write. Can the top I can write it down for you. Tell me what it is. So the top left um, number in the x axis is positive. Just and the just tell me the matrix. Um, tell me the numbers. Let me write them in. So positive one. Mm -hmm. Positive zero. Positive zero. And negative one. Okay. All right, so um, um, zero is neither positive. Well, zero, we don't consider zero positive or negative. Um, zero is neutral. Because when you add a positive and a negative, you get of the same value, you get zero. So it's kind of neutral, all right? Okay. But, um, do you all agree that this is the matrix that give you a reflection in the x-axis? Who is your hand let me see? All right, let's see. All right, let's see. So, all right, good. All right. So just to be clear, guys, that your, your um, goal here is to remember these matrix or matrices. Once you remember them, I can assure you that everything else will fall in place. Because even if they give you a question and they tell you that um, use a matrix to reflect this in whatever axis, then you'll know exactly which matrix to use. All right? So you have to you have to memorize these. These are something that you have to commit to memory. So you have to just use these techniques to remember them. All right, so a reflection in the y-axis, which matrix, Mr. Arty? Tell me, let me write it down. Sorry, um, zero, one. Where do I start? Zero here? Yes, sir. Zero at the left. And then one? One. And then and one at the left. One and zero? And zero at the right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Did you hear which one I asked you for just now? So you said, um, I mean, she said the reflection in the y-axis. And is this the one? Um, oh, sir, no, sir, the, um, the y-axis is negative one, zero. Hold on, so, so clear this one. Yes, sir. So it is negative one, zero. 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 And positive one. And positive one. Are you sure this time? Yes, sir, because it was, it did have it on the screen before, I just. All right, let me see the hand that those who agree with this one to be matrix for the reflection in the y-axis. All right, correct. All right, so let us clear this one now. A reflection in the line y equal minus x. Miss Green. Sir? Yeah? Sir, let me hear the question. Describe the matrix that give you a reflection in the line y equal to minus x. Thinking about it, you want me to ask somebody else? Yes, sir, I'm thinking about it. You want me to ask somebody else? Yes, sir, because I'm not sure of them. Okay. All right. Um, let me ask Miss Wilson. Yes, sir. Yes. Zero. 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 Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. And zero. And zero. Is there anybody else who is in agreement with Ms. Wilson? Raise your hand. Anybody else? All right, so it is correct. So this one is a reflection in the line y equal minus x. All right, so the other one should be pretty easy then. So I'll ask Miss Green again. A reflection in the line y, a reflection in the line y equal x. Come Miss, come Miss Green, tell us what matrix will give you that reflection. So I'm not understanding. Okay. So, so we did learn four matrices just now, and all you're trying to do is to remember them, which is which, right? So let me go back through them quickly for you. So we have one. So you have one looking like this. I have another one looking at like this. I have another one looking at like this. Another one looking like this. So which one is this, guys? 
The first one is which one? Reflection in, in what? Reflection. This one is a reflection in the x-axis. This one is a reflection in what? This one is a reflection in the y-axis. This one is a reflection in which line? So it's a reflection in the line y equal x. This one is a reflection in the line y minus x. Y equal minus x. All right, so all you need to do, Miss Green, is to know which axis, which of these matrix will reflect your, your pre-image in. So the key thing is to look at the matrices, find a way how to remember them and, and uh, identify which axis they are, uh, which, which, which line, where the, which axis are they reflecting in or which of these lines, y equal x or y equal minus x, they are reflected in. So can you look at these and find a way how to remember them, Miss, Miss um, Green? That's what we're doing. The pattern that we look at for, for the x-axis, Miss Green, the pattern that we look at, we say that the elements the row going across above, call those X elements. Row going below, call those Y elements, right? So for all of them, the X elements are above and the Y elements are below. Now look at this matrix. If you notice the one above, you notice that one is positive. So X, the one is positive, so it reflects in the X axis. So if this, if the one is positive above, this the one down below going to be negative for the reflection in the X axis. Following that, Miss, Miss Green? Yes, sir. All right, look at the one that reflects in the Y axis now. Notice that the Y, the, the y element one would be positive now. So if, the, if it is a reflection in the y-axis, this element one down here going to be positive, uh, but the one above going to be negative. Now, these two matrices that we just look at, they, they orient it just like the unit matrix, right? The only difference is that so this is what the unit matrix look like. One, one in the diagonal, zero, zero here. But the only difference that these are from the unit matrix, in this one, the one below is negative, right? In this one, the one above is negative. All right, so this one, where the one below is negative and the one above is positive, that's a reflection in the x-axis. For this one, and the one below is positive and the one above is negative, that's a reflection in the x-axis. You get those two clearly now, Miss? Miss um, yes, sir. All right. Now, the other two, what you do, you flip the ones and zeros. So where the ones were, you put zeros. And where the zeros were, in one case, you put positive one, and in the other case, you put negative ones. You see that? Yes, sir. All right, so the one with the positive ones give you a reflection in the line y equal x. And the one with the negative one give you a reflection in the line y equal minus x. So can you remember them separately now? Yes, sir. So 
should I ask you to tell me any one of these you, you think you'll be able to tell me that? Yes, sir, I think so. Let us see. A reflection in the y-axis. Negative one, zero, zero, one. Negative one, zero, zero, one. Is that this one is a reflection in which one? The y axis. Okay. Is she correct, guys? Raise your hand. If you agree with her, raise your hand, guys. All right. So you are correct, Miss Miss Green. All right, let us try one more. A reflection in the line y equal minus x. Zero, negative one, zero, negative zero. Zero, negative one. Negative one, zero. Negative one, zero. All right. Reflection in the line y equal x. Zero, one. Zero, one. One, zero. One, zero, good. Reflection in the x-axis. Negative one. Zero, zero, one. Which axis are axis with the sound? X. Okay, is this a reflection in the x-axis? Hands, guy, if you are in agreement with her. Nobody is raising their hands, Miss Green. What do you think of me? It's incorrect. Right. So this one is a reflection in which axis? A reflection in the y axis. Remember, if you think of y down here and x up here, if 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 we're reflecting in the y axis, the one where the y is is positive. If we're reflecting in the x axis, the one where the x is is positive, and the, and vice versa. I get it, Miss Green. Yes, sir. All right. You just have to practice those. Now, the funniest thing now, guys, how many matrices you, you just learned? Four. All right. So you have four more to learn now. All right. So let us look at. So these we just look at. All right. So here we have some rotation matrices now. Now, I want you to look carefully at this one. This is a rotation of 90 degrees. This is a rotation of 270 degrees. Now, what you notice about these two in comparison to the ones that we just look at? Sir, the reflection in the um. In the y axis is 90 degrees. All right, so the rotation now. So the, so the rotation. All right, so these will have looked, these matrices 